Welcome to our presentation. Myself, Likita. Uh, myself, Sri Divya. We'll be presenting the topic Secure Interbranch Payment Transaction. As the name itself suggests, transactions happening within different branches of the same bank. Now let's have a look at the introduction. General Bank of India has a current payment system called EPS, Electronic Payment System. Now what does it do? It deals with the transfer of payment among the branches of it via a message service called GBI transfer. It has its central server located in Mumbai called Central EPS Server. All the branch offices have their local EPS server connected with the central server in Mumbai via a network VSAT, Satellite Communication Network. Now, what's the issue here? All the transaction of GBI transfer are not encrypted and they cannot be traced to a source. Here comes the issue of non-repudiation. Now, let's have a look at current EPS transaction flow. A person who initiates the transaction at the payer end gives the details to the data entry person. The data entry person enters the transaction details with the help of an EPS interface. The bank officer validates and then authorizes and then stores that in the local PM database, payment master database. The GBI application looks for the pending transaction and sends them to the EPS center by one in Mumbai. This is later stored in, in directory at EPS central office. The pending files are collected in, in directory and sends to PM application at that office. The transaction headers are then changed in order to send credit requests to PM payment master these transactions with the changed headers are encrypted and placed in out directory of EPS Central. GBA transfer application at EPS Central office collects pending transactions in out directory and sends to the payee branch through VSAT. This transaction is transferred and stored in the in directory of payee branch which is later collected and posted in PM. PM marks credit entry and returns an acknowledgement and this acknowledgement is placed in out directory of payee branch. GBA transfer picks the acknowledgement at payee branch and sends to the EPS central through VSAT. Once received, it is forwarded to payer branch. Finally, payer branch receives the credit acknowledgement receipts. Here the transaction is completed. Terms in and out directories that we have discussed earlier, all what are these? All branches and central servers maintain both in and out directories to record the incoming and outgoing transfer requests as well as acknowledgements. Incoming requests are stored in in directory, outgoing requests are stored in out directory. The incoming requests in in directory are made to wait until they are accepted and processed. Once they are processed, they are sent to the destination, which are made to wait in outgoing, in out directory. Now to summarize the whole, uh, payer branch, payer branch officer approves a transfer to payee branch. This transaction is then transferred via network to central server. The central EPS server then transfers the inst uh, instructions to payee local EPS server. The transaction is recorded in all three servers and stored in respective PM database. The payee branch sends acknowledgement to EPS Mumbai, which in turn transfers the acknowledgement to local EPS. Requirements to enhance the EPS system. Uh, GBI want to process like complete uh, the process. Uh, it want the complete automation of the process, and it want to make a connectivity to the whole internet. But can we do it? 
like what are the side effects or backdrops of doing automation and making connectivity over internet there are problems like confidentiality uh, data loss and uh, misuse of the data so how can we provide a uh, secure network so one of the important issue we need to consider is the security measure when we are implementing uh, an eps we have to develop the security we have to develop the security measures how can we do the security measures by public key infrastructure framework and when we are speaking about security we need to think about few points like non refutation non refutation uh, we have to think about few points like non refutation we can stop non refutation by digital signature so what is non refutation non refutation does not allow the sender of the message to refuse what he claims of not sending that means once if we have sent a request for the transaction after completion of the transaction we can't claim that we had did not did any like we had did not send any request for the transaction and uh, the second point we have to think is encryption what is encryption encryption is a process of transforming plain text into cipher text so uh, this will improve the security of the data transfer and a smart card support for storing sensitive data and on card digital signing this will support us to securely transfer the data from payer to pay and we are using closed loop public key infrastructure to improve the security and confidentiality and integrity of the process so we need to uh, consider these four aspects when we are impl implementing api non repetition non repetition can be removed by digital signature encryption smart card support for storing sensitive data and closed loop public key infrastructure so the what is the proposed solution we have proposed here is the proposed solution the transaction flow is split into two parts payer leg and payee leg what is payer leg the payer branch to, the flow of transaction from payer branch to central office and what is payee leg this is from central office we are tra the transaction the flow of transaction from uh, central office to the payee branch so how we are checking whether the transaction is secure or not what we are doing since providing cryptographic functionality requires the usage of cryptographic tool tips it is assumed that we will use cryptographic authority infrastructure and pk uh, pki public key infrastructure for offering security and transaction will be digitally signed and encrypted and decrypted at the payer and the payee payee branch as well as at the eps central office to maintain security we are encrypting the encrypting and decrypting data at the payer payee and eps central office and signing operation can be performed external hardware like smart card the architecture of payee links is shown here as shown after verifying the transaction the eps officer authorizes the transaction eps officer authorizes the transaction in the payer branch internally the application digitally signs internally the application is digitally signs the transaction the signature along with the transaction details are stored in the local pm database and encrypted and placed in the indirect for signature whatever the signature which is signed that is encrypted using toolkits at the payer branch payer branch the signed and encrypted transaction is sent to the eps central office the encrypted file whatever the encrypted file which had reached the eps central office uh, is decrypted at the eps central office before storing the transaction in the database first we will check the digital signature the digital signature is verified using an appropriate cryptographic tool key the verification process also check the status of the user digital signature whether it is in the crl or ocsp check if the status of the certificate is invalid the transaction will be rejected otherwise it will be stored in the local pm this is a process of flow of payer branch what we are doing here is the transaction is here digitally signed and encrypted and sent to the sent to the uh, eps officer eps officer first check, uh, checks for the digital signature he verifies the digital signature and certificate and then stores in the local pm the next flow is eps flow at the payee branch uh, 
DPS flow at the payee branch. On the payee leg, the DPS central office will create a credit request as before. Sign and encrypt it. Sign and encrypt it. Encrypt the request with the banker bank's office digital certificate. This signed and encrypted request will be forwarded to the payee branch. In the payee leg, the PM software at the DPS central office will generate a credit request for the payee branch. This request is uh, will be digitally signed. The signature along with the credit request will be encrypted and sent to the payee branch. The payee branch will decrypt the credit request and verify the digital signature which is signed by the bank's officer. If the signature is verified successfully, the transaction is entered into the database. Otherwise, it gets rejected and the status of the same is sent to the EPS central office. If in case the verification of the digital signature fails, what uh, the failed status is also sent to the EPS central office. The credit response to the EPS central office can also be uh, the credit response to the EPS central office can also be digitally signed and encrypted in a similar fashion. This will uh, increase the confidentiality and integrity and increase the security of the transaction. So before I, I want to just conclude the payee branch, in the payee branch, the EPS officer sends the credit request. The credit request is encrypted and digitally signed by the bank officer. The signed and encrypted request is forwarded to the payee bank. The payee bank decrypts the credit request, verifies the digital signature. If the signature is verified successfully, the transaction is entered into the database. If the digital signature is not verified, then the information about the failure of the credit request is sent to the EPS officer and the credit response to the EPS central officer can also be encrypted and decrypted. Okay, so our topic ends here. Thank you.